Hey guys, it's Amy at Zoe Beck and I'm gonna do my weekly reading update for November 18th, 2018. So we are definitely in the middle of nonfiction November. I did a lot of reading this week and there's still a lot of things I wanna get to. So it's very much working out for me, um, again, alongside with my writing. I am currently still on track. <laughs> I kinda fluctuate back and forth. Um, I'm just, you know, a little bit ahead at this point. I mean, I still need to write today, I don't count because it's early, so, <laughs> and I'm going to a write-in uh, later this afternoon, so um, I'm sure I'm going to get my words. I just need, um, you know, the, the standard number, but if I can get ahead, because I need to build up a little bit for to cover Thanksgiving, because I'm probably not going to write on the holiday. Anyway, that was my writing update. Anyway, <laughs> so um, reading-wise, I did really well this week, as I said. Um, Oh, and apologize for the hair. I got my hair done yesterday. I know you can't tell, but my hairdresser said, don't wash your hair tomorrow. And I'm like, ah! I don't know about you guys, but I know some people have the great option of not washing their hair every day. And it doesn't matter what I do. I can't do it. My hair just is so oily. It's so, it's so fine. And it just, there's nothing I can do. Anyway, so it looks horrible. I apologize for that. I don't usually apologize. I don't care about that kind of stuff normally, but I hate when I can't wash my hair. It's just like, ah. Anyway, so now that I've ranted about that, I've wasted time. Anyway, so let's get into this. I have a lot of books. So um, on Sunday um, last week, I um, was, um, I had 40 pages left of H is for Hawk by Helen McDonald. And I really enjoyed this book overall. And I did finish it that, that morning right after I filmed and, um, I don't think I loved it as much as some of the other books. I mean, it, it, it was still a really good read. Um, I still find it very fascinating. We get to hear about T.H. White, um, who wrote The Once and Future King, which I was not expecting at all. But it is kind of interesting on her perspective on how she dealt with grieving um, after her father passed away suddenly. So um, I think it was very much a, you know, it's a telling book about her on how she reacted not cried in the right way and uh, what she did for her time before she kind of went okay I, I need to kind of get back to the land of the living kind of thing so I did enjoy it um it was really fascinating to hear about goshawks I don't know much about any kind of bird really so it was really fascinating I, I found that um that very interesting um because I don't know anything about falconry and um all that stuff so it was it was good and um i i thought it was really written really well and i i did enjoy that and i know a lot of people recommend it so i would say the same thing i think it was a really great read i mean i'm gonna say i didn't love it like it wasn't like i wouldn't i didn't like it was the best thing but it was it was still a, a good book oh look at the fur my cat's in there there anyway um then um i was gonna pick up another book but it was sunday so i finished that and then i went out to lunch <laughs> so I go well, I need to take a book when I go out to lunch because uh, I was going by myself sorry some of us who are single do that a lot anyway um but I picked up a short book which I had 84 uh Caring Cross Road by Helen is it Hamp anyway um I saw this on other people's channels over the the last couple years and um I've always wanted to read it and I got a really cheap copy one day off of Marketplace and it's really a nice copy too and it came like in two days it was like two or three days it was like amazing how fast it was anyway so I had this book and it's you know it's under 100 pages and it's it's in letter format and it's letters between uh a script writer in New York City um, writing uh, a rare book dealer in um, in uh, London, and um, and the relationship she has with the people who work there and her life, and um, it was really cute in the way that you know it spans like 20 years in this, and there's a quite a bit of gaps because there's probably letters she lost along the way or whatever, but um, she did, re you know, I'm guessing she had copies of stuff she wrote and then what other people or they found them. I'm not sure on that part but it was really neat to see the back and forth between him because she was pretty funny she's a funny she was a funny person I, I she would have been interesting to know and um and it was really you know it was, there was there was sad like I actually you know I read most of this during lunch and then I came home and finished it um because it was really really fast it's really a fast read if you want a really fast read um and I have to say I you know I teared up at the end it was it was sad to me so it, but it was really good and it, I was, you know, 
happy tears. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know how to explain that, but it was really, it was a really good story, uh, like a story of just some friendship from people who um, never meet, and it says that on the back, and it was just, it was sad. Anyway, so, oh, I don't know why I have, sorry, I have, <laughs> Anyway, um, the audiobook I finished um, in my car um, earlier this week was When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanethi. And um, again, this is a book that I heard a lot about last year. Um, and I got, I found it, I got it on sale at some point on audio. So I uh, finally decided to listen to this. Um, this was really hard for me to listen to because of a lot of the stuff going on um, in my life in the last month or so. But it also was very well done um, talking about um, a neurosurgeon who um, has, I think, stage four lung cancer and his decline. And uh, again, he wrote this book in the last months of his life in order to get it down. So it was really powerful that way. And I liked seeing his insights on things. It was I, I really enjoyed this. And then, um, as I said, there's an afterwards by his wife as well. So I think that was done really well too. And the audiobook was really good. I, I really enjoyed it. And I just realized that I'm not telling you, I don't know who the, who did the audio book for this. So I, I'm not very good about that. I'll, I'll try to be better about that in the future guys. Um, I just, I don't remember who was the speakers on this. It wasn't one I had heard before, but I, I did enjoy it. So, um, but anyway, this was a quick, um, again, it's not a very big book. Um, but it was, I, I thought it was really uh, well done. And I, I, I'm glad I, I got to that one as well. Um, and then I um, finished Moss by Art Spiegelman. Um, this is, again, this is a complete bind up. Um, so it has book one and two in it. Um, and this is, of course, a graphic novel. Um, so I really... I really, um, I'm glad I read this. I'm not going to say I enjoyed it because of the subject matter. You, I mean, I don't want to say that. Um, I, um, I think overall, I think it was really well done. Uh, it's, it's almost unbelievable. Some of the stuff that, um, art is telling the story of his parents who, uh, were in Poland, um, during this time. And then they went to a concentration camp and stuff. So it went through that whole thing. And, um, and it was just, uh, cause again, they were Jewish, sorry. And, uh, it was just, um, it was just, uh, heartbreaking on the stuff that they all went through and who they lost and all that. And it just, it was hard to read that in that way. Um, but I have to say the harder parts for me were the parts were that were more, well, real time or, you know, we're in the seventies and eighties, I think when, um, art is making this and he's asking his father what happened and their relationship is kind of messed up with stuff that's happened because art came, uh, was born after the war. So, um, it's just, it's very, um, it was so hard to read those parts. And I still think that now that I am finished it, that was it. And then the only other thing I had issues with, and it's just, it was just my, maybe it's just me. And again, I, I do read graphic novels and a lot of stuff, but, um, it was hard to tell who was who because of the, the, using the, the the mice like as the care like that's how he represented the jews and the cats were um the nazis and i think there were pigs for the polands Pol or you know some they're another i don't know it just it's most of the time you could figure out who is who but there was once or twice where we hadn't heard from that person in a while or they just appeared and I'm supposed to know who they are. I don't know. It just, I felt like I got lost a couple times with some of the names because you can't tell by the drawing. They, they look all so similar. So that was one of my only little criticisms on that, on the artwork, but really overall, I think it's uh, really, it was a great endeavor on his part to put that all down and to uh, get that out to us. And very, um, I think it was kind of sad how he, you know, as I said, had his relationship with his dad in there and it was, I, I mean, as I said, I think it was, it's, it's poignant and it, it was, it's needed to be out there, but it was still a hard read. Um, so, um, the next, another physical book I picked up was Elizabeth and her German garden by Elizabeth Van Artem. Um, this is again, I bought this last month and I was like, why did I buy this? Clearly I just was click happy one day. Um, I'm not a gardener, so I don't know why <laughs> I thought this was a good idea, but it's a year in this, um, in, I think in like, 1898 or something close to that, like around in the 1890s. And, um, 
about Elizabeth Van Arden, again, who went on to write um, Vera and the Enchanted April. But this was her book that she wrote about her garden um, and how it was like a year cycle. Like it starts kind of, I think, April to April kind of thing. Um, so I liked a lot of this It was because it's again, it's a really short read and it's, it's pretty dense though. Like, you know, she writes a lot <laughs> for those days. Some of those, the entries are not short. A lot of them are pretty long. And, um, but I liked it, but I didn't like when we got to kind of the winter time. Um, I was expecting, I don't know. I guess I was, again, the garden part was so much fun in the beginning, her talking about it, even though I don't know anything about flowers or plants. <laughs> I'm so not into that. Um, but she, you know, I just, I, I kind of lost it during the, it became kind of like, I don't know. It was the people that had been invited for the Christmas holidays and the things that went on between them. And I don't know. I, I just did not enjoy it. I guess I, I liked it when she was talking about, um, you know, her family and stuff, but not, I don't know. I just, there's something about that whole, that whole section I just didn't like. And I had to plow through that. But I, I, I like the way she calls her husband the man of wrath. Because <laughs> he is, oh, I almost wanted to hit him over one of the, some of the things he says in here. I mean, she doesn't write him very uh, nicely. You know, so, you know, but it was funny, though. I mean, that part. But I don't know. Overall, I didn't really like it. I, you know, it's not, not something I'm probably going to keep or, you know, recommend to anybody. I just, it's, I like the garden parts of it. it that was the interesting part because it was a pretty wild garden and it was, and she didn't know much of anything and she was learning stuff. It was just, that part was good. It was the whole Christmas time thing. I don't, I don't know. I just, I didn't like it. So anyway, so if you guys have read that, let me know what you think. I don't know. I just didn't care for that. And then the last book that I finished uh, this week. So I guess I'd finished six things. That's pretty good for me. <laughs> uh, is The Last Castle by Denise Kieran. Uh, the epic story of love, loss, and American royalty in the nation's largest home. So this is about the Biltmore Estate in um, Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, yeah, North Carolina. And um, I went there two years ago. So um, I knew this book was coming out, so I was waiting for it. And then I waited for paperback so I could get a copy of it. So I did read this uh, this week. And um, it took, as I said, I think it took me most of the week. I think I read all those short things on Sunday and Monday. And then uh, this is, this took me the rest of the week. Cause it's not that it was, it just, it was a long week at work. Let me just put it that way. So um, this was really good. It's talking about um, George Washington Vanderbilt and how he decided to use his fortune that he got uh, from his um, grandfather passed down from to his father, to him. And, um, you know, cause they were like millionaires, like multi millionaires. And he decided to, he wanted to uh, build a house out um, in North Carolina to get away from New York city. Um, you know, just to get away because he had money anyway and it was fascinating because again i knew a lot of this stuff from the tours that we took and what we saw and stuff so but it was really neat because i could remember stuff like it mentioned something I'm like oh i remember that and so i re i really did enjoy that so um overall i thought it was a really good read there's only one thing i've marked here just because it did bother me and by this point i'm halfway through the book and she kept doing it so um Again, with my historical books, I really like like real details, like real, like really what happened. But she kept like um, kind of waffling on did did they know about their financial issues way before um, they became clear to everybody else? And I I don't like that it's always put as kind of a well we you know maybe he knew or maybe not. I don't know. It just it seemed kind of waffling, and I didn't like that. And it's as I said, I, I just go, well, did he know or not? <laughs> and maybe we don't know because a lot of um, correspondence and stuff was destroyed between people. Or, you know, they made sure they destroyed some when people died. I don't know for sure, but I'm just like, it was just a waffle. It was just like one little thing. Other than that, I really enjoyed this and I'm glad I finally read this. I'm definitely passing this on to my dad because again, he, we went on vacation there. So uh, he's supposed to get this next. So I really enjoyed it. And so if you want to read about that, it's very fascinating. Again, if you get a chance to go to the Biltmore, definitely. I know the price tag is high, but it was definitely worth it. It was it was fascinating to see a house built um, in from the 1890s and it's still all intact. I mean, it's it was amazing. It was it was a great trip. So um, anyway, so those are all things I finished, which I think is pretty dang good. 
So I am in the middle of Cosmos at this point. I am about 274 out of 360 about. So I figure another day or two in my car. I think I have like three and a half hours left on the audiobook. So um, I'm hoping to get this done before the holiday um, so I can switch to something else for my long ride to my, well not long ride, my the hour and a half ride from here to my parents' house for the holiday and then back. Um, but anyway, so um, I am enjoying this again. This is um, Carl Sagan's going, like is connected to his uh, TV show back in the 80s that was about the cosmos, of course. So um, it, it's really good. It's a good, um, I think it's a good entry level book. I mean, it's, it's long, but I th think it's really good about talking about, you know, um, about the universe. And I'm really enjoying it. It's just, again, I know a lot of this stuff from other books I've read or listened to, um, but it's nice to have it said again and it kind of goes through your mind and you think about all the the big wide expanse of universe and it's it is really good so i'm almost done with that one and i'm i'm really glad that i mean i'm, I'm glad i picked that one up so and then uh the physical book i'm reading right now is travel as a political act how to learn how to leave your baggage behind by rick steves so again this is rick steves from the pbs obb whatever station you guys like the public station uh that does the the European travel. Um, he just or he does he does other ones I guess too now. But um, I remember it mostly in Europe and uh, on the Rick Steves show. And it was very. Um, this is so so much more um, dense than I thought it was going to be. So I started this yesterday. I'm only uh, 50 pages in out of 300 and something. I think it's like just over 300. Um, but it's no, I guess it's just under 300. Sorry. So I think this is going to take me a couple of days just because it is much more dense than I anticipated. I thought, I mean, I knew it's going to be about, so it, it's about a book about um, how people should travel in order to expand their minds and to learn from other people's perspectives, you know, things that we, you know, maybe we don't see because it's different here compared to over in some other country, which is, you know, completely true. So I do like that he um, he's spending time talking about different areas of the world and how um, like things he uh, got to experience because he went off the beaten path. He didn't go to all the high touristy areas. He took the time to talk to people and um, it's I mean again it's fascinating. Again I love his show when I do actually get to see it just because I want to go traveling and it would be just so much fun. Um, to be able to do that. I just, yeah, I don't have the money. But uh, anyway, so um, I think this is going to take me at least a couple of days to get through. I mean, I'm hoping today, because it's Sunday, to get a good chunk of it, but I'm pretty sure with work, it's probably, it might be take me till Tuesday or Wednesday to finish it if I read, you know, 50 pages a day. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes, because again, it's um, holiday week. You don't know, but I am enjoying it. So, so far, I, I'm really enjoying it. Weird copy. Like, it's like, it feels like a like a tour, like a mag, like a tour guide kind of thing, which is funny because it is, but not, I don't know, the paper is weird. So um, just really, really quick because <laughs> I have rambled on quite a bit. This is going to be one of my longest videos, I think. So I have a few books that I think I'm going to pick up next um, physically. I don't know audiobook wise, so I didn't grab anything for that because I don't know. After Cosmos, I either can go to a, you know, I can go in a lot of different directions. I have quite a few. So we'll we'll see what happens. I'm not sure. So I'm hoping to pick up at some point um, Fruits, Baskets, and Other, um, which is a manga. Uh, this is volume two by Nisuki uh, Tayakaya. And this is, again, this is the second series of the Fruit Baskets. And so I'm collecting them as they come out. I just got this one. So um, I'm probably going to pick that up at some point. I might go back and reread <laughs> book number one that I got a couple months ago. Um, so... And again, and other books I'd like to pick up. I still have Being Mortal by Ethel Wande. Um, this one, um, I'm not sure I'm going to pick up. This has been on my list all year to read, but I've read a lot of books on death uh, this month already. I'm not sure I want to do that. And the other one about that has a death theme, but is more of a true crime, is The Suspicions of Mr. Witcher by uh, Kate. Summer Scale, um, A Shocking Murder and the Undoing of a Great Victorian Detective. Again, this um, is in the Victorian era and a, a murder that wasn't solved for many, many years. And I think it pretty much destroyed the detective on the case. And then years later, I think they found out he was right. I'm not quite sure. I can't remember. But I have this from the library. So I might, I might read this. I don't know. 
or I might get the audiobook too. I'm not sure. Um, if you guys have heard the audiobook, let me know if you thought that was a good way to consume this. If not, um, I might just pick up the physical book. I don't know. We'll see. But that's that's another one I'd like to get to. And then one I really, I'm probably going to start today a little bit and work my way through from here to the end of the month is Paperback Crush. Uh, who is this by? Uh, Gabriel Moss. And so, again, being a child of the 80s and 90s, I want to watch, there's all the old books that we uh, used to read and uh, in what was our young adult, but it was called the teen section. And a lot of these, you know, it's really funny. I've just kind of glanced through and I've read a lot. Again, I read a lot of books back then and a lot of them were from the library. I only owned a few, but it's funny because there's already, I, I just opened it up one day and it like landed on a series I remember uh, reading. So, and of course I had to read that entry, but I'm going to try to go through this um, a little bit every night uh, for the next couple, you know, for the next week and a half uh, to try to get this done by the end of the month. I just think it's funny. <laughs> I just to talk about that. Anyway, so I've talked way too long. Oh my gosh, this video is super long. So if you made it to the end, I thank you a lot. And, um, as I said, so um, let me know um, what you guys are reading or if, um, and again, uh, if, if there's anything uh, you think that I would enjoy, uh, let me know. Because again, I'm really enjoying nonfiction. November is really awesome. Um, and should I do the audiobook on the suspicions of Mr. Witcher or should I just read the physical? Let me know. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.